Right now, though, I want you to meet a lady whose life has been lived on a roller coaster of stardom since she was 19 years old. And I think she'd be the first to agree it's been quite a ride. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Jane Russell. <laughs> Good to be here. Jane, you've had a career that's encompassed uh, motion pictures, uh, philanthropy, mm -hmm. charity. You've written your autobiography, or you're writing it now, as I understand mm -hmm. it. Designed apartment buildings. This list could go on forever. <laughs> I think. Well, I'm a Gemini. What are you going to do? <laughs> <laughs> why, people would say, why didn't you just stay in the movies? It's such a glamorous life, is uh, to people. It's hard work. And I enjoyed it very much, and I loved all the people that I worked with. But there are so many other things to do. I couldn't possibly just stay in one thing. I'm not, uh, you know, if I don't work in the theater, <laughs> I'm going to die. It's not that with me at all. It never has been. No. Not from the beginning, if I remember correctly. Right. I was going to be a dress designer. Mm -hmm. You could have been, and still you can now. <laughs> do, you, do you ever design anything? Oh, I do my own clothes a lot. You do? Mm -hmm. I do, too. I love it. I think it's exciting. Mm -hmm. You've had a career of uh, marriage, divorce, widow, widower, widowhood, and you're now writing an autobiography. Tell me about that, because I did, too, eight years ago, when my husband, Richard, died. Uh, two years later, I finally finished it, but it was very difficult. It's like being on the couch. Mm -hmm. Uh, has it been this way with you? Yes, it has, and it's not even halfway through yet, so I don't know. I'm ready to tear my hair out with it. You are, really? Mm -hmm. Well, I felt the same way, too, but... Well, it's been delays and all kinds of things, but it's still going along. You've had such a life. I mean, you've yeah. got a lot to cover there. Far more than I did, because what? mine was so just in the theater. But you... what, what's so hard about writing your autobiography? Give me an example. Is well, it just sitting down with the typewriter because you have other things to do, or is it hard to, to write about periods I in your life? I can't type, so I sat down <laughs> long and... <clears throat> no, it's just uh, going through the reliving of things and trying to remember them accurately and then wondering if it's going to hurt someone's feelings and, you know, all those things. Mm -hmm. And the painful parts you relive. When I wrote uh, the, the first time, it was... I, I wrote a hundred pages in longhand. <laughs> And I hadn't been born yet, so I thought it was going to be lo longer than War and Peace. <laughs> so I quit and didn't start again for 12 years. Right. At the height of your career, let's, let's talk about WAIF for a minute. You founded this organization called WAIF, W-A-I-F. What led you to do that? Well, it was in... Uh, my own three children <clears throat> are adopted. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was in looking for... My, my daughter was born, and my... I am the oldest girl of four brothers, and I always wanted to have an older brother. Mm -hmm. I thought it was unfair for a girl to have to do this, so I started looking for a little boy between one and two years old, or between birth and two years old. And there weren't any available in the United States at the time. It was very difficult, so I went to Europe, and I went into five different countries, and I saw children in orphanages that would never be adopted in their own country. Mm -hmm. And I thought, this is ridiculous. Children and parents, wherever they are in this world, should be gotten together because they need each other. Mm -hmm. And so we started working on, when I, after I had found my boy, um, I started trying to f find out if there was anyone doing this kind of work. Mm -hmm. And there wasn't, so we formed WAIF, a few friends and myself. And it's grown and grown, and it's mm -hmm. kind of like watching a parade go by because there are hundreds of very dedicated women and men across the country that are uh, working for WAIF and raising funds. At first we were bringing in children from overseas and now we're working with the Child Welfare League of America putting out pamphlets of the hard to place children, mm -hmm. the ones that would be called unadoptable years ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, in fact there was a boy who sued the state of California because they had never tried to find him a home. Mm. When he grew Did up, he, win? he won the case, and uh, uh, one of the women from the Child Welfare League, Betsy, came out to testify for him, and uh, she found an older man who was single and had never had any children, and his wife had died, 
and he was adopted at the age of 21. Hmm. Oh, that's a lovely story. Listen, is, can mature people, or couples, or, or now single people can... can now single can, people, can mature we have people fought all through that. We, yes, there's, in fact, there's a, a black priest that I read about the other day who has adopted a little black boy. And the church has not uh, put their foot down. They're oh, going to allow it. Marvelous. There are many, many children, there are thousands, really, <coughs> that are either in foster homes and should be either returned to their own family, have some assistance in that field, or should be made free for adoption. They should not be put from one foster home to another to another and never have any permanency in their lives. Jane, as you know, this, this program explores a lot of different uh, lifestyles and different options for people who are in the 40s, 50s, and 60s. What would you say to a couple that might be 40 or 50 or 60, either with or without children, about adopting a young child into their family? Is that a good thing? Oh, I think it's a marvelous thing. I don't know what I'd have done without my children, really. They're, uh, I think it's a, just a fantastically rewarding experience to have children, period. Mm -hmm and to take someone who has never really had someone that they belong to, it's a, the most important thing in their life. You said you had trouble finding a child. Is it easier today or is it harder today than it was it's in the It's never 40s been easy in the United States. Uh, it is, <clears throat> but one of the things we have battled is trying to get the children that are, that have a physical defect or um, they need hospitalization, they need help uh, to get those children adopted because before they just said, well, that child is unadoptable and they put them aside. And if it was an older child, they said that was unadoptable. But you see, when we brought children in from Europe who were uh, maybe nine years old and there were two siblings along with it and they couldn't speak English and they had a whole... Uh, culture shock and change and to see those things working out our own welfare uh, departments decided you know well just a darn minute we have children of our own in our own backyard mm -hmm. that uh, could be adopted if these children are are working out mm -hmm. so it's really the the whole picture has changed and now there are marvelous uh, couples who are adopting children with uh, medical problems and uh, up to now, the uh, government has been helping with whatever uh, hospitalization mm -hmm. or the therapy, mm -hmm. the, which would be expensive for an average family. And uh, that's where, what we're trying to keep. Where are the headquarters of WAVE? Uh, we're in New York, and mm -hmm. we're in the same building with the Child Welfare League of America. Because I get letters, you know, from people saying about adoption. Mm -hmm. I mean, they, they think everyone in the theater or uh, on, on television know the answers, but I don't know very. And, and this is very <coughs> exciting because I know of a couple in Houston who are just so anxious to have a child. Oh, they've well, most, tried everything. Most people uh, used to want, you know, the, the beautiful blonde, blue-eyed baby girl mm -hmm. or whatever, but... Uh, if they have a chance, they wouldn't even let them see children before. Now you can see children. In fact, one of the things WAIF's money goes to is putting out a newspaper that has pictures of the children and their history. Mm -hmm. And then they can see them and they can have a chance to fall in love because you have to fall in love. Are, are there laws, do you think, that, that are on the books either in states or in federal government that inhibit adoption, inhibit the, try to, the things you're trying to do? I know you spend some time lobbying. And Oh, yes. Well, there's a very important law right now uh, that they have... They spent five years putting this law together, and it's PL 96272. Sounds like you know something about it. <laughs> I certainly do. Uh, I know this program is going to be shown later and earlier, but we'll find out whether this marvelous law that they spent five years trying to put together is a reality, is, is uh, allowed to remain. Uh, now that the block grants are involved and everything, we don't know whether we're going to lose the law and we're terrified about it because I've been working on this kind of thing for about 15 What's years. Law do? It will uh, say a child in a foster home must come before a judge every two years and the judge then can decide whether the natural family has paid any attention to the child. Mm -hmm. Should it be 
freed for adoption or is there a way to work it back into the into the family there was a woman who had seven children she was alcoholic mm -hmm. and all of her children lived in foster homes now they had spent tons of money in the process of the foster homes mm -hmm. but no one had ever worked with the mother so now they have they've gone back and they work with the mother and she has all seven of her children oh. home the cute thing was that when the children would run away from the foster home they would run right back to mom isn't that marvelous? So there should be help done with the family, and if that isn't possible, then cut it free and let it be adopted. Don't leave it in limbo sounds, all those years. Sounds like a plot of sound to me. So music. that's what this <laughs> law will do. Jane, thank you very much for being here with us. We wish you the best with WAIF and hope you'll come back and see us soon. Thank Ladies you and gentlemen, Jane Washington.